Hello again, this is Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. It's a series of eight self-improvement lessons that I have learned from over a thousand people who have been my students, my clients, my friends, and my family members. I've focused a great deal on self-improvement and self-help advice. I've sought some myself. I've attempted to give a lot. I notice with interest other people who do the same humanitarian thing. My observation, as perhaps yours is, is that a lot of self-improvement and or self-help advice doesn't work. I've spent a lot of time trying to understand why is that and how can that be changed. I think there is a simple answer that many people, perhaps like you, are unaware of. Self-help, self-improvement is big business. There's a lot of money in it. People are anxious to improve their lives and their situations. People like Dr. Phil and Tony Robbins and Oprah and Ann Landers, many other people have gained notoriety and probably fortunes offering advice that people feel is sound and helpful. In many cases, the advice is helpful. It could be more helpful if there was one other factor that the advice givers knew. Most don't. What is that? Um, have you ever sought self-help? Do you know people who have? Have you ever tried to become more assertive, quit smoking, lose weight, become a better leader? Think more positively. Have you ever tried those things? Did it work? I hope so. If it did, congratulations. If it did for a while and then you slipped back into the old way, there's a reason. Once you are aware of this reason, you can then improve your life and make it stick. Over the last 19 years, I have seen as a family systems therapist. The tangible results of people recognizing and admitting their personalities <clears throat> are composed of subcells, like the members of an orchestra or the talented players on a sports team. And people who acknowledge this are not underlined not crazy or pathological or they don't have multiple personality disorder. They have a version of it that's much, much milder and still has a significant effect on their life. What does this mean? What I have been taught and have um, va validated in the work I've done as an internal family systems therapist since 1991 of the subcells that most people, if not all people, have, there is one who can be called the true self. If the other subcells leave this one alone, you experience feelings like feeling alive, awake, alert, strong, clear, confident, hopeful, compassionate, happy, grounded, realistic, optimistic. If, however, some of your subcells don't trust or don't know of this true self, you probably have several dozen subcells altogether that are operating and under the covers, under your hood, so to speak. They are causing your thoughts, your behaviors, they affect your body, your hormones, your nerves, your moods. Your subcells are running your life. If your true self is not allowed to direct and guide your life, other subcells can take you over. They can be called, metaphorically, a quote, false self. When someone's false self is in charge, typically they report feelings periodically or chronically of feeling gloomy heavy, down, sad, directionless, empty, angry, frustrated, fearful, confused, lost, abandoned, 
resentful, biased, bigoted. These are common symptoms of a personality that is split up and managed by inept but well-meaning sub-selves that don't yet trust the true self. I have never witnessed in the 20 years that I've studied human behavior, self-help, self-improvement, and done therapy with and for people, and experienced it myself. I have never witnessed one self-help guru, self-improvement instructor or champion, some TV personality, author, producer, not one, acknowledges the reality of personality subselves and the dominance of false selves. Their good advice will fail because while the advice may intellectual may make intellectual sense, and you would say, yes, that makes sense. I should work out more. I should get more sleep. I should eat less fat, etc. I should balance my checkbook. I should brush my teeth every day. I should go to the dentist every six months. Blah, blah, blah. This is all true. You can't argue with the logic. However, just as the best of New Year's intentions fail, false selves will predominate. If you don't know about your false self, you can't change that. The best self-help advice will not work unless it points you at awareness of the, the false selves that control you and cause the bad habits and help you free your true self who really can follow healthful, productive self-help advice. So, my point here is, if you are interested in self-help and or trying to improve your life, <clears throat> and you've been frustrated because your efforts have worked only minimally or not at all. I urge you, study lesson one in the Break the Cycle website. It is free. I'm not selling anything except awareness. <clears throat> lesson one will introduce you to your dynamic, amazing personality subselves will help you identify who's really running your life. Is it a false self or your true self? If you're ruled by a false self, lesson one will show you how to free your true self and live a much more productive, serene, happy life. So if you're in the market for self-help or self-improvement, be skeptical. Study lesson one. There are a lot of videos related to that lesson in YouTube. Enjoy the results.